as we're waiting for people a couple more minutes we're just going to intuitively move along with the music and if you have any physical condition today feel free to type it in the chat box at any time any questions because the class is for you is to answer your health question okay or some of us are maybe talk therapists or Reiki healers so if you have client studies right your clients health conditions you can also bring um, you know case studies <laughs> And today is um, International Women's, Women's Day. Day. So yeah. ha happy, happy Day. happy Women's Day. So the purpose of Qigong is to move the energy, right? So if you feel like crying, yawning, screaming, burping, farting, uh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold back. Let it out. It's better out than in. Mm. Just now I was working on a client with um, a lot of abdominal bloating and endometriosis, CP uh, PCOS. And it was so amazing as soon as the acupuncture needle went and her stomach went and blah, 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 blah. All these blockages in the body was coming out. It was really uh, music to my ears. <laughs> so if you guys fart or, you know, cuss or cry in this class, it's the biggest compliment, okay? So uh, release away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it looks like it is seven o'clock. So um, I'm gonna get started. So welcome everybody to Five Elements Healing. It's just the second class. And if you missed the first class, the whole class is on YouTube because we actually gave a scientific definition of what is chi. So sometimes it is helpful to to be able to communicate with clients scientifically what is chi uh, we are here to align our soul mind and body and welcome you if you have a notebook to take notes or if you want to if you want to uh, use your phone and take any pictures ask questions welcome to do anything you want okay we're just here to have a good time okay everything flows so just a little background about me if you've never met me before um i was very much stuck in victimhood a couple years ago before i went to acupuncture school so here in 2015 you can see a picture of me after four years of the school um, instead of I need help is how can I help and so this program this four-year medical degree has really changed my life and I then became a person who specialized in healing trauma and yes so let's dive right in what is qigong qi means energy and gong means work so qigong is the practice of moving energy with intention. So walking and yoga can be qigong. Okay, standing can be qigong. Taking a shower, sitting down, lying in bed. Okay, then you're like, Woody, if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm watching Netflix, is that qigong? Well, if your attention is the Netflix drama, then it's not qigong because it's without intention, right? So what is the intention part of the qigong? It is the cultivation of awareness and accepting what is. So it's like having this internal gaze. So when we practice Qigong, we want to close our eyes. In fact, you can close your eyes through this entire class and not look at me or the PowerPoint slides at all. 
awareness, it's like noticing, ah, my right shoulder is higher. Accepting is, ooh, there's a pain in my lower abdomen right now, right? It's having this, not rejecting it, not hating it, you know, it's, it's accepting it is here. What's really interesting is the body can take care of itself because with every inhale and every exhale, it's like we don't even have to think about it. Accepting is transforming. So accepting the pain actually transforms the pain. So in this class, we're going to talk a lot about yin yang and five elements, bringing that into balance and know that when we do our job of practicing qigong every day the harmony that's inside the microcosm is reflected in the external environment right so there are wars going on in russia and ukraine but imagine we can actually bring peace to the world by practicing qigong that is how powerful we are all right so everything is made of yin and yang now, most of you know yin is feminine, dark, water, moon, mother earth, resting, being, being content. And yang is masculine, light, fire, sun, fire, sky, pushing forward, giving, innovating, building, providing. <laughs> How very funny, right? I was just telling my clients, like a lot of women wear pants, right? We, we prefer the masculine. We prefer the light over the dark. Okay, but if we actually look at the Tao symbol, this is the bread and butter of TCM, the black fish is the same size as the white fish, right? And today we're going to dive into what does it mean for yin and yang to be interdependent and what it means, okay, notice that within the white fish there's a black dot and within the black fish, there's a white dot. That means yin and yang cannot separate. And within yang, there is yin. Within yin, there is yang. And this is so amazing. This is something we observe in nature, right? Day turns into night, night turns into day, right? Okay, so let's apply that to real life. We're gonna go deeper than the last class. This is the law of yin-yang interdependence. My ability to practice discernment, set boundaries with a firm no, allows me to actually relax and soften into my femininity. A man's ability to accept the chaos, the emotions, the wars all around him, the conflicts, the screaming, the yelling, allows him to be the shelter and the strong container. So this is the principle where yang feeds yin and yin feeds yang. And guess what? We both have the masculine and the feminine and all kinds of illnesses is because we don't have this yin yang balance. So let's look at yin and yang cannot separate. Within a parent, there's a child, right? All of us here are over 18, but there is an inner child inside us. And actually, I don't know how many people here have kids, but I have kids and my kids tell me what to do all the time. Mom, you should cook this. Mom, you should drive here. Mom, you should turn here, okay? Within a child, there is a parent. Okay. So another example is within a giver is a taker. Within a taker is a giver. Now I used to have this male patient, okay? He actually is allergic to gluten, but he became allergic to gluten at 56 years old. Then I'm like, wait a minute. Clearly you're not born with gluten allergy. Then why did you suddenly develop this gluten allergy? It turns out 
because he said that he was dating all these women that were takers. Women are all takers. They're takers. They're all just taking, taking, taking. And I'm like, uh, okay, you clearly didn't understand the TCM yin yang law. Okay, within a taker is a giver. So how, in here parentheses, I put the word Buddha, right? Because Buddha achieved enlightenment, but then he continued to knock door to door to beg for food, right? So what that means is even though the Buddha is taking food from you, he is a giver because he's giving you the opportunity to accrue positive karma, right? So just notice, okay, if you think that, oh my God, he's always so XYZ or she's always so XYZ, well, you know what? The opposite is also in existence. All right, so here's another principle. Within strength, there is flexibility, right? So here you can see bamboo, right? Bamboo can be used to build tall high rises, very, very strong. But bamboo is also, you know, flexible, right? With inflexibility, there is strength, right? Water has no shape, it's very flexible, yet water can make Grand Canyon, right? So within strength, there's flexibility. With inflexibility, there is strength. Now I wanna give everybody a chance if they want to share their yin yang understanding, if anybody has any examples. Okay, that could be homework. Next week, come back and tell me, what do you understand about the yin yang laws? Now we're gonna dive into the five elements. <clears throat> so a lot of people know that the five elements is wood, fire, earth, metal, water. But what's interesting Okay, so there's trapped emotion in all of this, but today I'm just really gonna focus on the mother-child relationship between the five elements. Because if you understand, then you won't get stuck in this wheel where one emotion feeds another and then you just can't get out. So Wu Xing is the Chinese name for five elements. Um, actually, it's a bad translation. Most people think five elements is like the five substances, right? Okay, but it actually, xing means to move. So it actually means the five phases of a cycle. So, okay, let's briefly talk about these elements individually and how they go full circle. So wood, okay, grows up and spreads out. And I don't know if you know anybody like that, but they do not like to be restrained, okay? So I don't know if there are any wood people in the room, but they don't like authority. They don't like to follow the rules, okay? It's like, think about this plant, okay? You, you, you want the plant to grow inside, but no, they wanna like break out. Like they just, you know that tree that grows out of a rock? Okay, that, that, think about that as a wood. Okay, they can bend and straighten also like an arrow. Now fire. So fire flares up, it burns hot and bright. Okay, I think most people know what fire is. Earth receives all things without discrimination, right? It doesn't matter if it's like love or it's like animal feces rotten tomatoes. Okay, it just receives everything. This earth is something that you can just pick up with your hands and is responsible for sowing and reaping. Okay, then we have metal. Now, I'm very metal. <laughs> um, metal is for purification, right? To get metal, we have to go through this purification process and we, we have to eliminate all of the stuff that are impure, and it's also about reform. But we need metal to help us cut grains, 
to survive, right? If we don't have metal, we can't survive. And finally, water, it provides moisture and which direction does water go? Down, right, to the low places. And water is also cold. Okay, so this is basically a chart that shows you the moving nature of the substances, right? So wood is the mother of fire, right? When you burn wood, you get fire, right? And then uh, at the end of the fire, the ashes turn into earth, and from the earth, you can extract metal, and then you get water, right? So this is like summer, spring, summer, in between summer and autumn, autumn, winter. So all of this is just the cycle, right? So here in this transformation, oops, sorry. We have birth, growth, transformation, harvest, storage, okay? So these are like things that we observe in nature and each of them correspond with, there's like a flavor, right? So, um, for example, if you think about this, here in Los Angeles, what do we have a lot of? We have a lot of oranges. Oranges have the flavor of sour, and you know, it's because we have a lot of this Mother Earth has already built in what we need to eat a lot of, right? So whatever local the produce is what we should be eating to nourish our element. And here, um, it's really funny. The sound, I just want to show everybody. Uh, shouting, laughing, singing, wailing, it's like crying and moaning or grunting, right? So when we experience anger, joy, excessive thought like anxiety, overthinking or overworking like all day on the computer, uh, grief, sorrow, and then fear. These are the corresponding sounds that we can do to vibrate this out of the body, right? So for example, if I'm very angry, I should do some shouting, okay? It's better that I let it out than for this anger to be trapped in my reproductive organs and turn into like, um, you know, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cysts, fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, right? So part of this is to understand that a lot of women, we, we're told we have to be nice girl, we suppress, suppress, and then so we have all of these things, right? And then what about men, okay? Men, they have a lot of fear, okay? So generally speaking, um, so they are likely to have, you know, lower back pain or knee pain, hair loss. Um, and so what is the sound? Oh, actually, uh, this is maybe a bad translation because understand everything is written in Chinese. I like the, fur, uh, the phrase grunting. Like, you know, um, when Serena Williams, when she served the tennis, she's like, Ugh! okay, like that kind of sound, like connecting to your willpower, okay? So if you have a lot of fear, you channel your own inner will, uh, Serena Williams and you make this like sound or when you imagine you're like this Taekwondo master, you have to break a board, you're like, hiya! Okay, so that kind of sound is what you make a lot of to overcome your fear. Okay, so we'll dive deeper into each particular element and how we can use that to heal our eyes, you know, our nose, our hearing, you know, in the clinic, I help a lot of people restore their eyesight, um, you know, recover hearing. There's all kinds of things that we can do with this medicine. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, oops. So here, I wanna give thanks to my teacher, Lorraine Wilcox. She, uh, if you go on Amazon, she's the author of over 10 TCM books because the following slides come from her and she has a very funny sense of humor. As you can tell, this, this is actually her Amazon author profile pic. So, <laughs> okay. So normal relationship, sheng means to generate, to produce, right? So we're going in this clockwise direction. So wood gives birth to fire. 
And what this is important is that this is a mother-child relationship, right? So if the mother is weak, the mother cannot feed the child or the child can drain the mother, right? So a lot of the times when we look at, for example, um, easy to think about is the wood is the anger and then, you know, um, the water is fear, right? So it, you can think about how fear can give birth to anger and then all of this cycle uh, continues. So here we're talking about the draining relationship, right? So, um, you know, wood feeds fire, but fire drains wood. Okay, so we talk about this already. All right, so this is the normal relationship, but there's also this thing called controlling relationship. Okay, and TCM, it's the grandmother. Okay, so what that means, let me move this bar. Okay, so metal is the mother of water and water is the mother of wood. Then metal is the grandmother of wood. And this is a controlling relationship and it, it's like attacking. Okay, I don't know who came up with this, but there are all kinds of TCM disorder that arises from this uh, relationship. For example, just now I had a client, she has a lot of anger. So when there's an excessive anger, anger, wood is the grandmother of earth. So the wood, if in excessive, is gonna attack the earth. So therefore she's gonna have digestive problem, right, turning into you know, she, she can't digest carbs and there's very little that she can eat now, you know, so everything is related, but it's almost like, well, if I want to resolve my digestive issue, I might actually, if I have weak digestion, I might actually have to let go of my anger to heal this other element, right? So this is why it's very exciting. Okay. So this is the concept that when one element is too strong, right? Imagine if you have a really, really strong-willed grandmother. Okay, Asian tiger mom, but grandmother version. <laughs> okay, so this is where they can overwhelm too severely discipline their grandchild. And okay, so this is an example of wood control earth, right? So the wood can actually limit the earth. And in some case, a little bit of control and discipline is good. All right, so. And then there is this other rebellious uh, relationship. So it's like if the grandchild is really strong, they can actually bully the grandmother. Okay, so this we call the insulting relationship. So, so whereas the grandmother, if it's too strong, can attack the grandchild. If the grandchild is too strong, it can actually insult the grandmother. And, and so when we do the Qigong, it's really great because we can bring all the five elements into balance. And if you think about the relationship between Russia and Ukraine, for example, there is some of this like, you know, grandmother and grandchild like controlling relationship going on. Okay, so, all right. Uh, without reading the text on the right side, which is the answer, if the fire is too strong, what can we do? Wow. Okay, yes, exactly. So. One of the principle is water is the grandmother of fire. So if the fire is too big, we put water on it, okay? So another way is to drain the sun, which is the earth, right? So very interesting. So we have a choice between draining the sun 
and like using the grandmother, but we don't actually want to upset the grandmother <laughs> um, because here it says in red, draining the sun is harmonious and smooth. So what that means is like, if the child goes back to the mom and be like, mommy, 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 give me some sandwich, you know, then the mom will go to work and, you know, make a sandwich for the son. But it, it's, it's much more harmonious. Um, so understand that there is many different ways to solve a problem. Right. For example, if you're on the highway and you're changing lanes, one way you can change lanes is step on the paddle vroom, and then get in front of the other car and then just like, you know, and that you might get a middle finger because you like <laughs> just cut in front of somebody. Or another way is you can just hit the blinkers. I want to turn to the other lane and just, you know, wait for somebody to yield and give you. So understand that there are many different ways to get there. Okay, so I am going. Okay, so this is also interesting. So there are combinations of yin and yang, and then there are combinations of water, earth, wood, fire, and metal. And different combinations of them are represented in each hour, right? So, for example, 1 to 3 a.m. is the hour of the liver. So sometimes when I treat patients with insomnia and they say, oh, Dr. Winnie, I always wake up between 1 to 3 a.m., and then I know, okay, maybe there is something, some grudges, something in the liver where we get to look at, right? So, so it's interesting, this clock, um, you know, if you feel particularly tired, okay, so some people, I know, they're like, oh, I haven't even eaten dinner yet, but I'm so sleepy and tired, okay, between 5 to 7 p.m. is kidney. So if they have a kidney deficiency, before dinner, they're like, oh, I'm so tired, I can't even eat dinner. Okay, so knowing the clock and knowing the organ really helps you imagine you can begin to figure out, you know, um, there's particular kriyas, which is this concept we have in Kundalini Yoga, and also qigong that target each specific channel, right? So for example, if you have kidney problems, then you can do qigong exercises to strengthen your kidney. Okay, so basics is already advanced. Advanced is basics applied. This is um, a little motivation, um, you know, as to why you might want to continue to study this class uh, with me because what if I told you that we can influence weather and influence rain and crops and get clean water, right? What if I told you we can actually reverse global warming? Now, I don't actually yet have the skills, but it is written in the textbooks. Um, the methods to save the planet is actually written in the Yellow Emperor Classic. So what I believe to be true is if a lot of us understand the five elements, if a lot of us understand which elements give birth to which elements and, you know, the controlling, um, you know, attacking, insulting relationships, we can actually bring this into balance and we can summon wood, summon water, we can actually summon the elements. Imagine if I can summon, you know, my heart chi, my kidney chi, or, you know, my lung chi, if I can cultivate that and 
through moving the five elements in my body, I can actually impact. Now, of course, one person, uh, I can practice 10 million years and probably not get there, but imagine if the whole planet or like a quarter of us got together and we all cultivated this, we can actually do this, right? So um, that's why I hope that you can continue with me on this journey. Every week we'll just dive a little bit into this uh, subject that I passionately love. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how do we gather the energy and how do we disperse this energy, right? So imagine if we have cancer cell, if we know how to disperse it, we can make it disappear, right? If we have flood, if we can disperse it, then we can like get out of it faster. The, the opposite is also true, like imagine we have drought and we don't have rain, right? When we can gather and manifest something, we can bring something into existence. So in Chinese, we call this qi ju zhe cheng xing, which means when qi collects with intention, then the form can take shape and we can turn it into wood and rain. Qi san zhe xing wang, when qi scatters, the form will disappear, right? So imagine what if like, oh, you got some COVID and it's like getting kind of cakey and blocking your lung passageway. What if I can disperse it, right? So basically the cultivation of qigong is it can help us go into emptiness by letting go. And we can also bring everything into manifestation by owning our sex, owning our passion, and owning our intensity. Okay, so just one more theory. I can call this blessing, actually. So one of my beloved Tao teacher, Master Sha, he's the author of many, many books. One of them is called Tao Tu, and he says that heaven's matter or substance, mother earth substance, human substance, everything in the whole universe substance is all part of the Tao substance. the heaven's chi, the mother earth chi, the human chi, the whole universe chi, it's all part of the cosmo, the Tao chi. So what that really tells you is that we human can absolutely influence the mother earth and the heaven and the whole cosmo because we're all one. Okay, so basically there's two mechanisms, right? There's one where we're turning things into emptiness and we call that the chi channel practice. When we're purifying matter into energy, we're just releasing it. And then the other is when we bring things into existence, we call that the matter channel. We're like bringing things into existence. So at this time, I'd like to invite everybody to, um, if you can stand, then please stand. And if you're sitting, then find a comfortable sitting position. Okay. So if you're standing, So bring a little bend in your knees and rock your pelvis forward and back a couple times. Move your shoulders and your hips 
and bring your hands lightly in front of your body. Now each of us are going to pick one area to heal today. So if you have a lot of hip pain, lower back pain, then bring your arms lower. If you have palpitations, anxiety, then impatience, bring your arms a little higher in the circle. And if you want to just shower yourself with blessings, you can bring it here. So wherever you want to heal your digestion, your lungs, your throat. So many of us are familiar with the chakra system. So I want you to imagine you're just bringing your hands up and down and see where your hands naturally want to rest. Wherever it wants to rest is where we're going to focus moving the chi today. So checking your alignment, how are your knees doing? Are they buckled in? Are they too turned out? So imagine that your knees are pointing straight forward. And that might require you to pick up your heel to adjust your position. So see if you can put your weight into your feet. and find a position, imagine that you can stand here for five hours. And now we're gonna bring a little gentle movement to our hands. So I'm picking second chakra whatever one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that you're picking today, imagine that you are moving the stagnation that's there. And now imagine that you are a fish swimming in the bottom of the ocean. <coughs> you might start to release. <coughs> you might add some tapping. <sighs> Scan your body. Oh. Echo, most of us already wanted too much. Oh. Oh. done releasing then stop moving your hands and begin building a solid light bar so imagine that we're gonna build a light bar this is kind of like charging your iPhone batteries what does it look like to build your battery from 3% to 100% So what actually charges this battery is all the positive thoughts, all the negative thoughts, all the positive feelings, and all the negative feelings. So with each inhale, 
and each exhale. I want you to imagine you're feeding this golden light ball, which is the oneness light ball of everything good and everything bad. Okay, maybe you have bad eyesight, okay. Maybe you're frustrated about your bad eyesight. Put that into your light bulb. And maybe you have a lot of gratitude for your heart or your brain. Put that into the light bulb. And maybe you have some fear about where the money is going to come in. And put that into the light bulb. Maybe you're really excited about this upcoming trip that you've planned. Bring all the pain and all the pleasure into oneness. Okay. And then bring the arms up and bring it down. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. So this next part, we're going to do something that involves chanting. So right over here, we have some calligraphy cards. These are the five elements of calligraphy cards. This is Dr. and Master Jigang Sha's calligraphy, and it is able to vibrate your organ so that we can heal the anger, right, and all this rejection, abandonment, and anxiety, overthinking, grief, and fear. So. Does anybody have any particular request? Like, oh, I have a lot of fear, or I have a lot of anger. Fear. fear. Okay, so we have uh, one vote for fear. One vote for fear, but also, what, what would stress fit into? Okay, that is a great question. So, in traditional Chinese medicine, stress is liver chi stagnation. So let's talk briefly about what stress is. Stress is when I have formed judgment, good, bad. I really, really want the good thing to happen and I really, really don't want the bad thing to happen. So then basically what happens is once I form the judgment of good and bad, I'm really attached to getting the good outcome and I'm really resistant to the bad outcome. So the stress is I really want what I want and I really don't want what I don't want. <laughs> so that, that thinking mind, right, created, so liver is the organ of judgment. So basically to let go of stress, let go of judgment, let go of good and bad and then we have no stress. Okay, so let's um, talk about this sound. Okay, so hold on one second. So this card right here, Choi, Choi is vibrates our kidneys. So what is kidney good for? Kidneys good for lower back pain, um, all kinds of bone stuff. So if we have spine problem. If we have knee pain, ankle pain, hair loss, uh, you know, all of those things, ear hearing problems. So um, everybody who do this practice will heal all of those things. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna show how to trace this card. It might be a little bit advanced. So if this is your first exposure you can just chant chui 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 and that's good but i'm gonna you know since this is a mixed level class i'm gonna offer different options 
So if you gather five fingers together, that's like five elements join as one. So um, So my fingers is going to block the calligraphy, so I'm using a pen. So the stroke down and then up, down, come across, down and around, flip it up and down, make a little circle and come back. So I'm going to do this three times. Down and up, down, across, down, all the way around, make a little flip. Down here and a circle and then down. So one more time. So this is actually pretty easy for it to do. Down, up, down, across, down, and then make a little loop. And then over here. So that is the Choi calligraphy. If you would like to chant the mantra and trace at the same time, you're also welcome. So um so let's do a little warm up to awaken the kidney. So the my favorite move to awaken the kidney is this this move. So you're basically turning and striking your kidney. So I'm looking around the room right now. <laughs> Give yourself a little um, self reflection to see what's happening with your knee. Is there a bend or are they locked straight? So when we're practicing Qigong, 90% of the Qigong comes from the legs, right? Because if I am a tree, but my roots are not planted, then I actually am not nourished. The only way that I can grow is I plant the roots. So more important than what the hands are doing, what the mantra is doing, is do you feel grounded in your feet? And again, you might start to release, release on the fear. Move that stagnation out of your body. last one and now that our kidney is uh, warmed up so I'm gonna start with the easy version okay so the easy version is you can put your hands on the kidney if you have the flexibility to do so and if not you can just hold a ball um, I'm gonna demonstrate putting the hands of the kidney so what you're gonna do is come into uh, the stance Okay, knees bent and close your eyes and you're just going to chant Chui and mentally use your mind power to vibrate the kidneys and the sound power is the mantra Chui There's also body power. Where you put your hands is where you get the healing. Chui. And now we add the soul power. Dear my body, dear my soul, heart, mind, energy, body, you have the ability to heal yourself. Do a good job. Chui. Leg shaking, that's a good thing. Leg shaking means the trauma is leaving your body, so let your nervous system readjust. Oh. 
Now, if you would like to try, you can trace this calligraphy. Allowing the calligraphy to offer you a blessing to heal your fear, your lower back pain, your knee pain, your ankle pain. Your spine, your bones, your teeth, your hair, your ears, your hearing. the mantra so you just turn to the calligraphy and just dear calligraphy please offer me a blessing to heal my fear that's appropriate my bones lower back hips knees make one request Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you, really. Thank you, Dr. Masa Sivan Shah, for writing this Tao calligraphy. Yes. And um, does anybody have anything they want to share about the class at Qigong or any question? Mm-hmm, okay. I, I, the, the um, my kidneys feel really warm right now, and my uh, what 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 I was originally working on is like there's a little tiny bit of congestion, so I wanted to work on that, and I feel I just feel more open in my chest, and yeah, I feel good, I feel warm and vibrant. Okay, we have a uh, comment. Uh, thank you, Dr. Winnie. I can't wait to meet you. Yes, the same here. Um, does anybody have any request? Uh, 
or any medical condition that they want to um, they want to share. You, what's going on with your swollen? Swollen. Yeah. Uh, all five fingers, both hands. Palms. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we're gonna add one exercise. So actually, two exercises. I lied. <laughs> so we're gonna first bring uh, circulation to the arms, and of course, this is my favorite. So. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing the arms five times and on the fifth time we're gonna dip and bend your knees so any kind of swelling anywhere is because uh, you know it's stagnant so we're gonna move So what feeds the hand, the palm, um, um, it's this, is it, sorry, is it this mm -hmm. side or this side? Exactly. This side. Okay, so there's three meridian that goes here. Okay, the lung meridian is the thumb, right? And then the pericardium channel is between the second and the third finger. And then the heart meridian is between the fourth and the fifth finger. So is there one between here, here, and here, is there a part that's the most swollen? That part, okay. Okay, so it, he says this part, yeah? I think it's second and third. Second and third. Okay, so between the second and third, that is the pericardium channel. So the pericardium channel, uh, you know, it's, it's, if, if it's not working so well, it's because we're impatient. <laughs> um, which, you know, of course I, I am very impatient also. And um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, after we've done this big move, we're gonna move a smaller circle. Okay, so we're gonna do this. So we're rotating and bringing healing, moving all the channels in the hands. And again, feel free to express this traps energy. And reverse. Okay, and now we're gonna do a little hand massage. So we're just gonna, between each finger, from the root of the palm to the front, on both, the, both sides, between each finger, give it three pushes. And then make circle and pull. Just bring circulation into our hand. And then now we're gonna just open, close, open, close, open, close. Perfect, good job, A plus. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you everybody for releasing. So anybody else have any physical issues? My knee. Your knee. My inner knee, and it has to do with my hip. Okay, okay. Um, so, okay, come back next week for community acupuncture. We'll, we'll address that part. Um, okay, thank you for this. I've been looking for Qigong class a bit of time. Yes, please come in person and also bring your pain, okay? Because 
Um, I like to, I, I'm, you know, um, doctor, so I like to teach to your problem, right? So if you have that problem, we solve that problem. Okay, so thank you everybody. Bring your, uh, you know, the parts that are not working so well and then we can chant mantras, we can meditate, we can move. And also if you have clients, if you have client case study, welcome you to bring your client's uh, health condition also. Okay, love you, love you, love you. See you next week. Thank you. Yes, that's really great. Thank you for uh, contributing.